Hello, welcome to Rebel Base, IGN's weekly Star Wars show. So the very first proper Star Wars Episode 7 Force Awakens trailer is coming very, very soon. It's going to debut at the Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim, and it's also going to be playing before Age of Ultron in cinemas. Yeah, so quite a few people are going to probably see that yeah. trailer. <laughs> uh, so the first trailer that we got just before Christmas, the teaser yeah. trailer. I think that was kind of established mood. Yeah. Established kind of the return to the... Good. feeling of it's the original real good. trilogy and basically yeah. it's got don't worry we've got this yeah. and it's kind of focused pretty much exclusively on the new characters mm. the fe female and male lead yeah um i feel like what do you want from this trailer i feel like for me we know that carrie fisher mark hamill and yeah. harrison ford are all in this film i really want to see them I want to see them, but I i mean, you said earlier that you want to see a little bit more story. Yeah. I want that. I want to see them. I want to see the character set up. I want to have little hints about what's going on, maybe. But yeah. I don't i don't want anything to be given away. And I think J.J. Abrams' trailers, they're always really good. And he doesn't give things away, and I don't want to know I feel like anything. this is Catch-22 with trailers. I and, mean, you know, with some of the... We've asked for your feedback, which we'll get onto in a minute. And I feel yeah. people sometimes with trailers get really scared. Like the X-Men First Class one a couple of years ago. Mm. You saw one of the kind of more climactic moments in the film. Did you? Yeah, with the submarine. Okay. And it's kind of right there in the trailer. And yeah. it's kind of the big money shot in the movie. Yeah, that's and amazing. I feel like maybe that movie doesn't have that many huge, huge moments. So yeah. it has to put it in the trailer and people are like, oh, kind of know what's going to be the climax. Yeah. Um, but... I think with trailers there is an art to them, and I think there's a way of suggesting story or like kind of the dynamic without ruining yeah. too much, because we're not quite sure. Oh, I, I think you need to. So far, all we've seen is a collection of characters and yeah. locations that we kind of know. Yeah. We have no kind of inkling to what state the universe I is like in. Yeah, but it's like it's going to be out at the end of the year. I feel like <laughs> a little more to say. We've got to do the show for eight more months. Yeah, that's what I mean. So if if they say about <laughs> different things, they could prove we get four everything weeks we've out of that. wrong. Yeah, four weeks out of that. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. I just don't. I don't want lots to be put in it. Like I, I'm fed up with the Age of Ultron trailers now. Like I feel like I've seen so much of that film. I know you don't agree with me, really. But I feel like, as well as this hidden stuff because you've seen a yeah. lot of the same locations and just like a bit more from the same scenes. There's lots of other parts of the films that I feel like the film you might be one of the scene. Yeah, yeah and, but I just, I kind of want to go in as blind as I can. Don't watch it. <laughs> well, I kind of have to because we do no, you don't. Star Wars I'll, show I'll, called I'll Rebel Mates. I'll reenact it for you. I'll reenact it for you. <laughs> All right, so what do people want then? So Brent Grisham says, honestly, nothing. I just want to be a complete blissful surprise on opening night. I'm with Brent there, to be honest. All right. But he lives in a lucky world where he's not the host of a Star Wars show. You're so making friends fun. though, just like sucking up to people <laughs> right in there. All right, next one is from Martin. Martin says, I won't watch the trailer because they will give something away in it. Spoilers. They always do. Avengers, classic examples. Kind of, again, what you're saying. Have well, you picked these tweets just to... Well, I did pick them all, yeah. Um... I think there's a cognitive <laughs> bias at work with the selection but of these tweets. that's the thing. You, you've got to show something, but then, you know... I, like, I watched the trailer for Southpaw the other day, the new Jake Gyllenhaal yeah. film. I know every single thing that happens in that film. Like, it puts everything in there. That's really annoying because I really wanted to see that film and now I probably won't bother. Easier, quicker watching the trailer. <laughs> Easier, quicker. Um, Krizza and Megalomaniac say both said Luke Skywalker. So that's kind of what we're talking about. That's going to be good. So similar, Jonah says just one frame at the end, this is all he needs, yeah. is Luke with a beard and hood. Yeah, I want that. I feel like I've seen that image like loads. I think there was like a Photoshop. I feel like this like like Photoshop with like some fake trailers. Yeah. And there was a really good fake trailer like a few months ago now that has something like that mm. and even though it's fake it's still pretty good yeah ernie barrett says i want to see luke go all vader on everyone that's not going to happen in the trailer although maybe they'll set something up where you know they see you know there's a falling out between han and luke or something like that and like that is the setup for the movie fighting with his brother in there yeah maybe don't know. so domestic, so domestic. <laughs> um lauren says um epic lightsaber duel obviously one of the best things about um phantom menace trailer was mm. seeing some of the Jedi's at the height yeah. of their powers fighting really intensely. Something like that would be really good. We've seen obviously the new lightsaber in the teaser trailer. That was trailer. probably my favourite bit. Yeah. We, of the teaser trailer. see a bit more of that stuff would be great. Yeah, that would be really good. Also to see who's wielding the lightsabers for the light side of the force. You know, we know Luke's older. That's who's going to be the other people? I'd rather see the new, I'd rather see more of the new characters than yeah. see the old characters, I think. But Blake Vickers finally says, I really want to see some stuff with the old cast. If it close the trailer with a shot of hand, I'll probably nerdgasm. Well, that's what we and some of these people want. But what do you want? Let us know, rebelbase at IGN.com. 
So here's Joshua to tell you why you should be reading the new Marvel Star Wars comic all about Kanan. Mm. What's up guys, Joshua Wheeler here to talk about a new Star Wars comic called Kanan, The Last Padawan. Kanan's character in the Star Wars Rebels TV show. So this is a bit of his backstory. It's being written by Greg Weissman, who was on season one of the show as a writer and executive producer. He's actually left the show uh, for season two, but you know it's good to know he still have someone who's there all along during the conception of the series, writing the backstory of one of the coolest characters in the show. He's definitely one of my uh, favorite characters. Uh, he's voiced by Freddie Prince Jr. I call him sort of like a battle hippie because he's got the long hair, uh, but he's got the battle armor, like shoulder piece and uh, the lightsaber. He's the resident captain and Jedi of the Rebels crew. And so it, it sort of goes back in time to when he was a young Padawan. He's the last Padawan, and like in the title, during the Clone Wars. And he's being taught by his master, whose name I will not even try and say because it's really ridiculous and I can't pronounce it. <laughs> but uh, it's really interesting seeing their dynamic. It reminds me a lot of the, the dynamic in the Gendi Tartakovsky Clone Wars relationship that showed Luminara and her apprentice to where they always move their lightsabers in the same way during battle. They're always in sync. Very cool, uh, really interesting to see. We know, you know, being the audience, we know that Order 66 is coming, so there's this tension to the comic book that there's this great relationship between Master and Padawan, but you know everything is gonna go, like, you know, the, the something's gonna hit the fan any, any second, so there's a lot of tension to the story. And oh my gosh, Pepe Lazara, the artist, is killing it on art. You know, we've seen Jedi cut up battle droids a million times, but I feel like I'm seeing it for the first time when I'm flipping through these pages. He is something special, and I cannot wait to see what's the rest of this comic book. The first issue came out this week. Uh, again, it's Kanan, The Last Padawan, and I highly recommend if you like Star Wars Rebels, like Star Wars in general, or just like good stories, please check it out. Time for more force feedback, where we read out your feedback. Are we actually going with force feedback? When you come up with a better name, then we might workshop some other ones. But okay. at the moment, force feedback. Right. And actually, I think this one's for you. Um, the subject says fat tattoo guy. So I'll just read it out because yeah. obviously yeah. referring What's to this you, about? referring to you. Okay. Uh, the big fat tattoo guy. <laughs> <laughs> he says, stop hating on edgy content. All the characters revolve around a very dark world. Just play Knights of the Old Republic or Knights of the Old Republic 2 to get a rough idea, with a slight happy, unreal tinge on them. I find you too much of a Star Wars hatter for this channel. Goodbye, please. Some very nice things to say about you. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> well, first of all, what about your tattoos? We're not Star Wars haters. I don't think so. I'd like to, <laughs> like to think not. <laughs> if, if it was, what better punishment for us <laughs> than to make us do a Star Wars show every week? Yeah. And we've talked about how much we love Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2 yeah. quite a lot. I think, like, it, this, I think this refers to last week you said you don't like Think when things that are just edgy for the sake of being edgy. That's right. So yeah. we were talking about um, a spin off Star Wars TV show, so you can yeah. watch that on last week's um, show. And I said, what if they did it for Netflix? Kind of what Marvel are doing with their Netflix properties and taking them in a kind of more serious, darker, yeah. if you want to use the word edgy, edgy direction. Yeah. And you said you weren't a fan of that. I said Star I was Wars... good as long as they're not doing edgy for the sake of being edgy. But I mean, his points are saying that Star Wars is a very, very dark world, which, yeah, you're right, it is. But shut up and don't call me fat. Right, next one um, is from Darth Ed. Yeah. Um, parents, big fan of Star Wars, Darth. Um, <coughs> I'm glad you mentioned some of the classic Star Wars fan films because there is such a rich history there. Kudos to George Lucas being so accepting of fan films and even promoting them with so many contests over the years. So last week we were talking about our favorite fan films. That's right. Some so really good ones out there. Yeah. Um, Darth Ed says, but my favorite funny fan film has to be George Lucas Strikes Back, which riffs on everything from Old Boy to the Beastie Boys sabotage video to Terminator 2 and Oliver Stone's JFK. Yeah. Bloody hell. I can't help but laugh every time I watch it and enjoy and may the force be with you. May the force be with you Ed. It's really really good as well like I hadn't seen this um, but it's a really really funny one. Uh, it's, it's only like a, sh a short short trailer. Well, but it's a lot in there. Yeah it's uh, just George Lucas just being awesome. Um, well, our final is. bit of feedback this week is from Jared Mayers who says as you well know in the Legends material Boba Fett does not actually die in the Sarlacc pit as what we know now according to the official canon that's where he resides. Because this is a really, really good point, something I hadn't thought about actually, because after Return of the Jedi, there's a load of books we see sort of uh, Boba Fett come back to life and how he gets out of the Starlight Pit, which is pretty cool. But if all those are now legends, that doesn't exist, which would leave Boba Fett in He's the still Starlight in there. Pit. He's still in there, yeah. But then he says, I think we'll at least get a clue to his fate in September's Aftermath. So Aftermath is a novel that's coming out 
um, as part of like the new canon. Um, so we thought we would talk about what that canon is. So there was an image released this week, uh, the story of Star Wars, and it basically shows how everything fits together. Yeah, so this is taken from a new novel that's coming that's out. That's right. And it's just in there, and it's basically like codifying everything. And going, exactly, this yeah. is core now. This is what's kind of everything else isn't. And I, I, yeah, according to this, straight after Return of the Jedi, the next thing before The Force Awakens is this novel called Aftermath, which is coming out later this year. And one of the things that that says in the sort of synopsis is that it will feature a much loved character from the Star Wars universe. So the sort of rumors are that it's going to be Boba Fett. But what else is canon though, Daniel? So let's let's, let's strip it, in order, let's strip think, it yeah. right back. Yeah. yeah. So um, the first thing we have now in the new timeline is the Phantom Menace. That's this right. Is where it all begins. Mm -hmm. Don't really need to say much more about that. I'm sure you've seen it. Yep. Then we go on to Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Again, um, nothing in between them as of yet. And then in between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith is when we get our first kind of. Um, other works um, yeah. outside the films. We've got the Clone Wars TV series, which right. we knew was still canon. Yeah. And we've got something called Dark Disciple, That's which right. is... That's a novel that's going to star Jedi Master Quinlan Voss and Dooku Apprentice Asajj Ventress. Mm. Uh, and so the blurb is, the only way to bring down the dark side's most dangerous warrior may be for a Jedi and a Sith to join forces. Good cop, bad cop. Yeah. That's kind of... It's the lethal weapon. That's right. Of no, in all seriousness, <laughs> it feels like this is kind of because Dave Filoni, the guy who yeah. kind of heads up now Rebels, but back then Clone Wars. Yeah. he's been involved. He said Ventress has become one of the most interesting characters. We had all this material. We had all these designs. This is based on scripts we had written with George Lucas. I'm super excited about this book, and that's out on the seventh of July this year. I'm really excited for that. I think it's yeah. going to be really, really good. What comes next then? Next after that is something called Revenge of the Sith. Yes. Which is the third Another film. film. And then in between the third film and Revenge of the Sith and New Hope, that's where currently there's the greatest number of kind of yeah. additional um, works to refer to. So the first one of those four pieces is Lords of the Sith. Yeah, this takes place between Revenge of the Sith movie and the talking book which you spoke about on the thing. And the blurb for that is, when the Emperor and his notorious apprentice Darth Vader find themselves stranded in the middle of insurgent action on an inhospitable planet, they must rely on each other, the Force, and their own ruthlessness to prevail. Again, another plot for a lethal weapon movie. Why is, it, why, is it, why is this all Lethal Weapon movies? There's Shane Black on board for most of these. They all set on Christmas. Um, sorry, Life Day. They all set yeah. on Life Day. Um, this sounds like a really cool like yeah. survival movie. It's quite straight. It's like that film Liam Neeson, The Grey. Yeah. It's <laughs> the survival of um, I quite like the idea. I that guess. sounds really cool. You know, the Emperor and Darth Vader sort of just spend a lot of time together. Almost like a sort of like bubble episode where the, of, a, of a TV show but in novel form. I think this would be really, really good. I think that one sounds really fascinating. Yeah. I mean, so, they, they all sound really, really good. This also features the very first outward gay character, Moff Morse, which is like quite, quite a big thing. And that's out later this month. On really April soon. 28th. Yeah. yeah, so that's got, we, we'll get on that very soon. Yeah. And then next up is Tarkin, yep. which we spoke about a few weeks ago. Eric yep. gave us a recommendation of why you should read that. Sounds so really you can good. check yeah, that out already. That out and then the next one is A New Dawn as yeah. well. So that introduces the Rebels characters from the Rebels TV. TV yeah. show and it shows you know how they got together and how they started which leads directly into the next thing in the canon which is the Rebels TV show yeah and that's the last thing then that comes before A New Hope and straight after New Hope we've got another novel Heir to the Jedi so a thrilling new adventure set between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back and for the first time ever written entirely from Luke Skywalker's first person point of view so it's like, it's going like, to be like Capture the Rye. So this is the colour Capture the Rye for a new generation. <laughs> um, I really like that idea. And I think it's, as you said, like it's a very, very different thing. That's really interesting to be like in his headspace between yeah. those two movies. Mm. So if you think about it, like some of the bad stuff, he's not found out a lot of the kind of big revelations to come. No. He's on a high, having just taken down the Death Star. Yeah. And he's about to embark on a life as a true Jedi yeah. and go undergo his training. So yeah. that's quite an interesting place to find him in. Well, and that's where like a lot of the Marvel comics are kind of filling in as well. This so. is what, I'm, that's what I was about to say. So it's odd that they haven't included the Marvel comics on the official canon thing, yeah. inside one of the, which is inside one of the novels. Yeah, because they are. But also, yeah. also, part of me, I'm sure they'll find an interesting story to tell between those two films. Yeah. But do you think the interesting story is some also between Empire and Jedi? Yeah. After that ending, exactly. And being in his head and consciousness, trying to process all that information yeah. would be fascinating. That'd be really interesting. But there's nothing at the moment in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Nothing yet. But before that, we've also got Battlefront, 
which yeah. is the first video game. That's yeah. pretty cool that that's considered, whatever happens in that game is considered canon as well. Yeah, so hopefully that means a lot of emphasis is being placed on story rather than just creating cool environments for the shooter. Yeah, or that they've just created cool environments and they're just like, make a canon if you want, nothing happens in it. So. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Battlefront, also like the Star Wars trailer, we're going to see a new one at uh, Star Wars Celebration. Yep. We're also going to see some of Battlefront, so I think we'll have more of an idea after that. Well, then, then we get to Empire Strikes Back. Nothing between them. Return of the Jedi. Then Aftermath. So this, I think, is probably the most exciting one. The novel is the first in a trilogy and is part of the journey to Star Wars The Force Awakened publishing project. The title will see the beginning of a new government in the wake of the Empire's losses during the Battle of Endor, and it will feature at least one fan-favorite character from the Star Wars film. That's out on September 4th, 2015. At least one fan-favorite. If you say fan-favorite, everyone who's a fan of Star Wars, Wicked. their favorite is... Wicked. Boba Fett, Wicked. I think. So there's Wicked. I mean, we had yeah, a bit of feedback earlier said, I know you want w Wicked. Wicked. It's not going to be him. <laughs> I, but like everyone who said it's going to be Boba Fett. And that goes back to what you were saying about how um, everything that was once expanded universe is now relegated to legend status. Yeah. And therefore, Boba Fett is still down in the bottom of that Sarlacc pit. Yeah. So possibly that's how we get him out of there and back into the Star Wars universe proper, rather than just down in someone's belly. Yeah. That'll be really good. Um, also, it sounds like this is kind of what I kind of want going into Force Awakens. I know you said I want to say stuff, spoiler man. free. Yeah. But if you kind of if you just want to learn more about the the political yeah. milieu in which um, the well, Force Awakens finds itself, that's the thing. <laughs> I, I don't the, I don't think that's spoiler. I think it's enriching. I yeah, think. I think it's going to give you background. If you want to yeah. know that stuff, obviously the film's going to stand alone entirely. Yeah. But if you want to know a little bit more about the prehistory, I think that might be really cool. Awesome. Well, that's the new Star Wars canon. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let us know. Rebelbase at IGN.com. Yeah, and until next week, for everything on Star Wars, um, stay right here on IGN.